ghosts and spirits, tricks or treatness. Something spooky is brewing tonight on Whiskey Business. Loose rhyme. Loose rhyme. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Dino Trapanis, your host of Whiskey Business, the podcast not so much about whiskey. And we have a live audience at 451 Spirit. It is our first Halloween special, and it is the best gift that I could give to our audio producer, Greg Hansberry. He loves Halloween. He's been wanting to do this forever. Congratulations. Thank you. Son, Son, I never wanted, Greg Hansberry. You have your Halloween special. You're dressed up in your spooky tuxedo. Nice. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's not annoying yet. Is that your? Is that oh, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God! Really? Oh yeah. There's like 14 sounds. <laughs> Good. Oh, we're gonna hear all of them, aren't we, Greg? We're gonna hear all of them. Multiple I think, before times. It's all said we'll take and a done. vote at the end. What's your favorite? Uh, before I dive into stuff, uh, let me just say, how about a nice round of applause for our spooky guests this evening? They have a new movie coming out, Obstacle Corpse. Hope Madden and George Wolf are here tonight. Yeah. E.R. Bucky Cartwright will be joining us. He has a new book out, Haunted Cemeteries of Ohio. And as you can see here at 451 Spirits, I'm pretty sure this place is haunted, goddammit. No shit. (laughs) But Chad Kessler will be joining us in 451 Spirits, along with Jesse Hubbard, who's been making your cocktails this evening as well. Say hi, Jesse. Hey, hey, all going, of them, yeah, all of them with 451 spirits, and there's if you want to buy if you want to buy some of the 451 spirits, they're available this evening. Uh, Er's book is available. Uh, Hope and, and and Hope has a book out as well called Roost, but we'll talk about more of that later. And uh, I, Hansberry, I don't think yeah. that Halloween is the scariest holiday. To oh, be honest no? with you, for what me, is? and maybe some of you will uh, agree. I think. I think Thanksgiving is the scariest of the holidays because you have your family with you, right? Is there nothing that scarier than true. getting together with people once in a year or once every five years that you've never seen in such a long, long time? You're forced to sit and have conversations with an uncle you know nothing about that decided to show up after 10 years. You've got other people with secrets that they're, that they're, that they're finally revealing or trying to keep quiet. And if you can go through three days with your family without any interruptions, that is a good Thanksgiving. But I find it frightening as hell. And uh, this is the first year that I won't be with my family. So thank you very <laughs> yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. This this is my, my spooky podcast for tonight. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Thanksgiving. At- that was a ghost. That was a ghost. Are you going to explain all of them each, each step? Well, of the they're way? not as clear as the little... I uh, picture uh, indicates, so I might have to. <laughs> Why do you love Halloween so much? Uh, uh, I I don't know. I got into it when my dad and I used to do like a haunted garage and stuff when I was you know eight, nine, ten years old, and I think I just kept the tradition going. Mm-hmm. And I lived in a haunted house for a minute. I lived in Indianapolis at a little haunted house. Uh, so that was like. Th- Did you see ghosts? Church. No, I heard the piano go a couple times, and also the dryer started one time. Which is nice because that's called laundry. It's, it, they, yeah, they're helping. It was a, like a helpful ghost, at least. Yeah. <laughs> you heard the dryer go off. One time in the winter, the furnace came on. It was really scary. It got really hot in the house. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, our 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 this our podcast get- isn't about me, do you know? It's not and, about and, me. And yet somehow. <laughs> You managed to make it so. Uh, <laughs> our guest bottle tonight, courtesy Woo! of 451 Spirits, is Bone Shaker Whiskey. <laughs> A pot distilled Ohio whiskey made right here in the confines of 451. It's available this evening. It is uh, it is delightful. We call Chad Kessler the mad scientist of distillers here in central Ohio. 
and he's got a, a wide array of spirits that he can share with you tonight. Uh, everything you're drinking that's made by Jesse Hubbard tonight was made with 451 Spirits. This one is 90 proof, and I'm telling you what, it goes down smooth and easy, so if you do get it, your bones will be shaken after a couple of good sips of this, without a doubt. Mm, so thank good. you for this. this is I delicious. like it. It's good. It's, it's, do you like, like it, Johnny? Oh, I love it. Do you? Oh, you can't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the thing about whiskey business. Uh when we started the podcast, neither one of these guys drank that much whiskey. <laughs> now they drink more whiskey than I do. And uh, I, I'm wondering after five years if, uh, if I'm not responsible for some sort of... You'll yeah. get the bill. I'll get yeah. the bill. I didn't yeah. bring my water. I'll get the rehab bill. But we got great guests for you this evening. And without further ado, I want to get started and get to it. Yeah, shall we? Yeah? Yeah, let's go. They've got their premiere screening here in Central Ohio, at least as far as I'm concerned, it's the premiere screening here in Columbus, Ohio, at the Gateway on October the 21st. They've been frequent flyers on Whiskey Business before. They have, we, have, we do an Oscar podcast with them. We had Hope Madden on talking about her new book, Roost. And I said, when Obstacle Corpse is ready to be released, I want you back on the podcast. So it's a very happy accident that this all timed out so well. Please welcome uh, the creators, writers, and producers, and director of Obstacle Corpse, Hope Madden and George yeah. Wolf. Oh, in costume, I might add. Now, I know that Hope and George put out a little video asking people to determine what costume they should wear for tonight's podcast. And I take it uh, Crystal Crystal, Crystal Lake Camp won Crystal out? Lake, yeah. Camp Crystal Lake yeah. won out? Yep. Yep. And this is one of your favorite Halloween movies? No. No, it is not. <laughs> but that's just because, I mean, I know all of the movies. So yeah. It doesn't. But it's enjoyable. It's fun. As much as you guys love horror films, and, and I'll get to this a little bit later, um, where does where does this one come into play as far as, is it in your top ten? No. I mean, no? No? No. It's fun, okay. though. I mean, it's fun. He's a great villain. But, I mean, you know, we, we really do. We watch we watch several hundred horror movies every year. Um, so, you know, it's, it's to get in the top 10, you, you gotta be a five star film. You gotta be a five star yeah. and you, but you also have a, a, a horror film podcast and you got the screening room, which is reviews of movies. Mm -hmm. So, uh, obstacle corpse is your movie. This is, I, I find this interesting. This is like you really taking a dangerous leap to the other side because, and I've asked you this before privately, uh, are you nervous about after having reviewed films for so many years, now being the film that's going to be reviewed. You know, we got our first. We got our first yeah. movie review um, uh, like a week ago because we had our we had our, our world premiere at a, a film festival in Tucson. And I was. I was a little nervous about it, actually. Yeah, yeah it's a you weird know? feeling. It's a, yeah, it's, a, it's an unusual feeling. I wasn't going to be, I think... A dick about it because I understand <laughs> if you watch a movie and you don't care for it, you know, uh, I get it. But luckily, she loved it. Yeah, it was yeah. really she good. Loved yeah. it. Nice. Yeah. All right. So that good that start. is a, that's a nice feeling. It was a that's really a good nice review. Feeling, so yeah. good start. So Obstacle Corpse. Yeah. Is the film, and uh, I'm gonna get this out of the way right now. Um, I don't know how many years ago it was, but George gave me the uh, rough draft of a short film mm -hmm. called Obstacle Corpse. And after I read it, I told George, I said, I like it, but it needs to be not a short. <laughs> It needs to be a feature film. Yeah. Because there's a whole lot going on. So I would like you to indulge me this evening, if you would, please. I still have it with me. Oh. Yeah. And, and I fleshed it out. There wow. it is. Right here. Wow. Right here. Nice. Uh huh. Memorabilia. I'm yeah. going to ask you, know, you, you guys sharpie, to put the, yeah, I'm going to ask you guys to sign oh, it. Oh, wow. So I can keep it. And uh, once things continue to grow and prosper. Are I'm going to sell it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sign it even though my contribution to this entire script was the title. She wrote the rest of it. It's I got title, the title, though. but I'll sign it. It's a good it. title. Sometimes that's the hardest part, George. <laughs> I'll take credit. It is not. Okay. But you know what? It is a catchy title. Thank, Thank you. you. Right? Thank Anytime you. you can get a good play on words yeah, and exactly. make it work, Obstacle Corpse. So what is the movie about? It's about a, a uh, young woman who 
just uh, she wants to prove to her dad that she can make it on her own that she doesn't need the whole family around her she doesn't know that she can really survive and so she uh decides to participate in uh an invitation only obstacle course race uh she somebody from her dad's shooting range shooting range stephanie has invited her to be (laughs) stephanie's plus one and so she has to sunny is the lead she she brings her best friend ezra to be stephanie's boyfriend's plus one and they're going to run this obstacle course race and they're going to teach whitey the dad that uh, they're fine on their own and they're probably going to go get an apartment and live like grown-ups okay and then when they get to the race eventually they realize that one of the obstacles is to kill your plus one. So that's uh, why they were invited. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Who hasn't wanted to do that ever? <laughs> <laughs> Got a couple plus ones here tonight. <laughs> Might not make it home. <laughs> so there's a lot of there's a lot of killing. There's a lot of blood. Uh, but there's a lot of nervous <laughs> laughter in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. It is funny. So yeah. You know, don't don't let the uh, don't let all the blood spilling uh, scare you away. So did you did you start out to make a comedy that's got horror in it, or a horror movie that's got comedy? I I don't think I can help it. Mm-hmm. I no. mean, one way or the other, I don't think I can help it. Yeah, because the whole thing really started when I think it was 2015, maybe. Um, I was running in one of these obstacle races, and she was going to run, but she had foot surgery, and just she just kind of followed along at all of these obstacles and just started thinking, you could kill somebody on, on these <laughs> yeah. obstacles. And just started thinking about it and thinking about it. And that, that was the genesis of it, wasn't that it? That was. I mean, yeah. by the time we're halfway home, I had killed a lot of people already <laughs> in my head. And that's one of the things, and it's the same thing with almost anything I write. I just, um, I, I, in my brain, I take a bunch of people that I already know and I put them in a horrible situation and I see what they do and mainly they bleed out. <laughs> and then that's the story. Yay. So <laughs> that's... Don't go to dinner with George and Hope, <laughs> I think is what we're learning right out of the gate this evening. No, that's, that's, that's awesome. It's, it's great. Now, do you, do you, you said there's a lot of gore in this movie or yes? There's do you a- like gory <clears throat> horror films as, as a fan? Um, at times we, I mean, um, we had, we lucked into having one of the absolute greats in terms of, um, blood effects makeup. So David Greathouse, who did Kevin Smith's Tusk and he did, uh, Killing of a Sacred Deer and he's done all of Lucky McKee's movies. I mean, he's one of the all time. He's he's amazing. And And he has, just has a shop up the road in Crestline. Crestline. So we got very lucky. Friend of a friend introduced us. He's incredibly nice and he's so good. And he... He you know, well, up. one of our producers, uh, Phil Garrett, is a good friend of his, yeah. and so Phil convinced him to to help us out. And he did. And you know, once once we had that caliber of blood effects available to us, you we were like, it. let's take advantage yeah. of that, yeah. please. Right. So we do have. I mean, you know, we not all of it. Not not every death is is you know a big burst of, of blood and gore. What? Um, wait, wait, wait a second. What? Not yeah. Everyone. Not everyone. But not everyone. Nobody, that, nobody really dies w- of natural causes? No. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah, Old so. age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the comedy? Now, does that... Uh, now, when you, when you, you wrote the script. I did. You wrote the script. Now, you and George work together closely. I mean, you guys are together literally 24-7. You're an amazing couple. <laughs> you guys review films together. You, you you make movies together. You do everything together. So when it comes to the to the comedy, are you going back and forth? Are you are you are you firing ideas off on George? Is this funny? Do you think it's funny? And well, George, yeah. I think I think one thing she does, which is genius, and she's been doing this for years, is she just carries a notebook around, and when people say interesting or funny things, she just writes them down. Mm-hmm. And I'm lucky enough that I've said some funny things. Yeah, sometimes. And she's written them down. Sometimes he winds up with a notebook. But, and <laughs> but a lot of it too is, I mean, so often when you watch a horror comedy, the laughs come from the kills right you're like the blood and the guts and this you know organs fall to the ground and ha 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 i don't find that funny and and so um in our in our film actually our goal was for the deaths the murders to be a little alarming um and then the characters are funny because i like funny people you know and so that's really what we tried to do and and you know again most of the characters are really based on people i know who are funny so our leads the, the you know the best friends are are based very closely on two people that I used to work with who are who are just hysterical oddballs and we do collect weirdos I think mm-hmm. George and I collect weirdos <laughs> and so um, and I think for me one of the the great um, 
reasons to do that, especially if you have so many characters. There are about 41 characters in this movie. Wow. Which, P.S., an idiotic wow. decision on okay. your first feature yeah. film. <laughs> yeah. But That's a uh, lot. It, it helps to make sure that you, you, you don't, as a writer, get lazy. They don't sound like me, right? It doesn't just sound like me with 50 different costumes on talking and trying to say witty things. Instead, they, they really develop real characteristics of human people that I know who have never had their heads splattered, but still <laughs> uh, close as I could to reality. So I think that that's one of the ways that we kept it funny is that the, the humor is very character driven. Character driven, but none of your friends thought, do you eventually in real life want to kill me when you said like, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> no. Um, but this, uh, my family yeah. um, reads more into it, I think. Although not like uh-huh. everybody knows they're in it, right? I mean, a lot you think you don't. A lot of and there's this one guy who shows up in almost everything I write because I <laughs> hate him and I just really enjoy murdering him as many different ways as I can. It's wow. not you, George, is and, it? Well, I was going to say, and guess who plays him in this movie? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, George. Oh, so it's not the actual guy. You don't have this guy. This oh no, is, no. This is a character that you hate. Yeah, and, there's a and, human being life. I have known yeah. in and my life. And he shows up in everything that you do. Yes. And okay. there's also there's and actually, also my first grade teacher, Sister Cleofa. She makes her way into everything I write yeah. as well, in one way or another. A right what you know. Nun, right what you know. Yeah. Yeah. She, there's no, there are no nuns in this, but it's set in St. Cleophas, Ohio, which is okay. not a real place, but it was my nod to the evil that is Sister Cleofa. <laughs> <laughs> which we, we'll, we'll talk about Roost here for a second, too, before we get to it, because there's a, there, there, there's, you've got a lot of dark a lot going, going on. on. You really do. A lot do. going on. A lot going on. Well, not hot, uh, which which begs the question. I, I'm going to get a little personal for a second. How did these two souls, since we're talking about Halloween, meet? How did we meet? Yeah. Um, I actually, back in 1990, was managing a bar and restaurant, and I hired her as a waitress. I think it was probably 91 by the no, time no. I was there. No, no, no. Anyway. Don't kill each other. <laughs> Guys, don't fight. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, she was 19 years old at the time, and I was a ripe old 26 so uh, I probably would have been sued uh, by today's standards, but uh, <laughs> that's how we met. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, have just been together ever since. Yeah, that's we have nice. been. Yeah. Nice, yeah. good man. Yeah, and you you found him charming and ah, yeah, sophisticated. She, she and... liked my mullet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> sweet. Now and, that's scary. And uh, porn no, stash at the time, I, I think. didn't like either of those. I liked his voice right away when I first met him. I liked hey, his hey. voice. He does. He's got, he's got great. great he's, he's got great vocals. He's got a great voice. Voice. Without a doubt. I mean, that's why the man's in radio, yep. right? Right. That's why he's in radio. Great stuff. Well, that's good. And how long have you guys been together now? Since 1990. 1990. Yeah. 19. That's a long time. It yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. still doing amazing things together. That's awesome. Um, the, the other question I have is uh, for for you, Hope, and, and this is kind of a fun one. I want to go back to what I said earlier <clears throat> in respects to your costumes this evening. Um, mm-hmm. You asked. I voted. I voted for Wonder Woman mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and Batman mm-hmm. because, and I thought, you know, and I'll tell you what my other choice was and why I didn't choose it, and I hope I don't get canceled because of it. Um, but I chose Wonder Woman because I was like, oh, here, here's a woman who's writing, directing, producing, and for years has been, you know, critiquing and so forth, uh, creatively, kind of a Wonder Woman. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. Right. Thank you. And George Batman, as we all know, George uh, <laughs> fights crime here in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> In the dark of night, right. unbeknownst to anybody, uh, you know, before it's all said and done. And then I almost voted for for Roger Rabbit and Jessica Rabbit, but I I I I, I don't know if I could sit next to you as Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> you don't want to go there, Dina. because that's the, like if there was a cartoon that I fell in love with. Uh, uh, who didn't have the hots for Jessica yeah. Rabbit and think to myself, "Oh my God, it's a cartoon." She's a hot cartoon. She is, she really is. But I imagine you're an awesome Jessica Rabbit, right? Well, I don't know. I, yes. <laughs> George is like, yeah, wear it tonight. Yeah. Yes. Can you guys yes. keep that costume to yeah, yourself? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Obstacle Corpse comes out. Uh, we're going to see it here. I had the opportunity to see it here in, in Columbus on October the 21st yeah. at the Gateway. I know it's a 10 p.m. screening. Tickets right. are... Uh, they the, just well, the, went this, on sale like about 25 minutes ago. Wow. 25 Individual minutes ago. tickets. Individual, yeah. tickets. You Individual can get, tickets. You can get full festival passes. And if you like horror, I really recommend that oh, you so do. Oh, so it's part of the a, whole festival. Yeah. yeah, it's a magnificent festival called Nightmares Film Festival that runs from the 20th to the 23rd at Gateway Film Center. And yeah. we're so thrilled we're to be a part of it. We're lucky enough to be, we're on the jury for that festival where you help to pick the films. So we're not and, in competition. We can't yeah. win anything for that right. reason. Uh, but That wouldn't we, be fair. But yeah. we, oh, we, we do won screen. again. 
We screen at, at 10 p.m. on Friday, and you can get yeah, you can get tickets right now. Yeah. So please and then, do. So there's going to be the screening, and then there's going to be a fun Q and A after, hosted by Phil Kelly and uh, Katie McKee from Good Day Columbus. Yep. Nice. Because if you didn't know, we're on Good Day Columbus every Friday morning doing right. movie reviews, and they have been incredibly supportive yep, uh, of been. giving us some some publicity for this project. So and there might be, be a little rap party afterwards. Nice. Just come and see us. A little drinky drink. Yeah. So let, let me ask you this: as a as the writer and director it's hard because you know we've we've collectively with John we've we've made films Mm -hmm. were you ready to let it go I mean how long did Mm -hmm. it take before you were say able to say okay uh, that's it this is this is this is the cut this is the version release my child literally today today oh wow really Um, yeah so we saw it uh, we saw it I saw it because because George wasn't able to go. I saw it for the first time theatrically two weeks ago um, in Tucson, and I did not like the sound mix, uh, which of course I'd heard a hundred times, but not in a in a theater. Not in a theater, right. in a theater, different. I always different. Different. totally different. Yeah. and um and so I I went back and had it redone, um, which was. A uh, little troubling because the the drop dead date to get our materials to Nightmares Film Festival was on October eighth, which is not today, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> but I figured we were already on the website, so they were going to have to. L- no, they were very nice about it. They totally understood. They didn't want crappy sound either. So yeah. yeah um, right. So now it sounds good. It looks good. And uh, yeah, and I need to just mm. let Did it you, go. Do this. This is your first time you directed a film. I mean, a, a feature, a feature yeah. film. A I've made three film. shorts, as you know. Yes, You're, I know. You are I'm, the star of one. I'm, I'm one of your shorts. I was. <laughs> <laughs> honored to be asked to do it. That was a fun day. Uh, did, did what? Did, did you? How'd you feel? I mean, that's that's a that's a big bite to take and a, and a lot to chew. Did you? What did you learn? Um, I was um, I was exhausted and completely overwhelmed. I was. I've never been so overwhelmed, um, ever. And it, you know, it's it was it was an awful lot. We were it was twelve days. That is an insane pace for a feature film. Like you, that's you shot it all in twelve insane. days. We yeah. shot it in twelve that's, days. That's, how, how many pages did all you have? All of it. Um, uh, it was a total of about seventy six scenes. I don't know. I can't. I don't know how many pages Correct. per day. That's yeah, it's yeah. brutal. It was um, it, really it was, grueling. Oh my god, it was really awful. really grueling. And it, it was entirely outdoor. We had one day with interiors. Everything else was outdoor. Um, mo- mainly we were deep in the woods. I can't even tell you how much tick spray we went through. And then that would be another thing is that, so I wrote it, I wrote it in the woods. These, these events take place in the woods, but I write scary stuff. So I write stuff that scares me. Otherwise it's not scary. Like on the page, I have a pathological terror of the woods. <laughs> so that was another incredibly dumb thing. Why? That was like the dumbest thing ever. Why? Why do you have a fear of the woods? I don't know. I mean, it, I'm also claustrophobic. You just are. You just have phobias. I don't. What know. happened in the woods? Nothing. I'm not dumb enough to go in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. I have always been afraid of them, and I have always avoided them. There always. was nothing in your childhood that said don't go into the woods. All, all those nursery rhymes, the fairy tales. No, 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 I mean, everything. Woods. Common sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, even Shakespeare said all of his creepy, magical shit was in the woods. Everybody knows. Just don't go in there. Did he say that? Did he say shit? (laughs) Probably. They always make it sound so far more poetic when you see it written in print. (laughs) But, you know, we got really, because the very, when we first started planning this, the first thing in my head was the obstacles. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, are we going to build these things? That that was the the Uh. be all and end all for me. So we got incredibly lucky with the Columbus Metro Parks. They were so accommodating, yeah. and they have a couple of obstacle courses in their parks, and they shut it down for a couple of days and let us get on wow. there. Yeah. And the way that our that our director of photography, Brooklyn Ewing, who was oh my great, God, she's glorious. you shoot them in a certain way so they look more imposing yeah. than they are. The fall looks you know farther than it really is, yeah. and it, they really worked great because that was my biggest thing. Yeah. we got to make these obstacles look real and so we looked at change the obstacles in any way to make them more dangerous i mean and, and, and there were a couple the opportunity that we to, to, to kill people with <laughs> there were a couple <laughs> that we deadly. did build ourselves uh um because well parks and rec they were lovely but we weren't allowed to like do a lot of damage or set things on set fire, things on fire. That's what they wouldn't let us no so we had to do that someplace else so um so but on the whole i mean it's not hard to it's not hard to kill somebody on an obstacle. It's really not. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go to the park later? Just Dino? need to be a little motivated. <laughs> in fact, really the best, I think probably the best kill in the movie, we were just taking a tour through it, and I looked at this one, and I thought, boy, you could do this with this with this, and it 
turned out great. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. turned out great. Thanks it's, mainly to Great House. Right. It's, oh, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a, good it's one. a mixed emotion when you have someone sitting next to you that's absolutely one of your favorite guests to have on the podcast <laughs> and also one that you're most afraid of <laughs> at the same time. And she's um, always smiling. <laughs> All right. So happy. Generic question. This being Halloween and you guys having a uh, a huge background. I know it's it's like picking children, but what is your number one favorite horror film? There was a recent survey, and I'll tell you what number one was, and maybe it is number one for you, but I'll tell you what number one was after you tell me. Mine is The Silence of the Lambs. It always has been. Silence I of the Lambs. A, I Excellent. think it's a perfect movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Great. I... Probably The Exorcist. Um, Exorcist was yeah. number one. Was it number one? It was number it's, one. It's so incredibly good. There are so many others. You know, yeah. on a different day, it might yeah. be something. To, yeah, he had a T-shirt on, yeah, didn't he? Right. Yeah. yeah, very, very nice. The Exorcist came out in yeah, what nineteen seventy, uh, the, the December of nineteen seventy three, I think. Yes, I think it you're right. Yeah. And that movie in nineteen seventy three grossed between winter and spring of seventy four grossed two hundred million dollars in nineteen seventy three. Yeah. In today's dollars, that would be like nine hundred million dollars, <laughs> more money than uh, the, the Star Wars: The Force Awakens. I think is what they said. And it's still amazing. Otherwise. You watch it today, well, it really especially is. the director's cut. You know, years later they added right. a few more scenes. Yeah, the it's one where so, she's walking yeah. down the steps like a spider. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good it's moment. so, so chilling still. My daughter never saw that movie. She was a junior in high school, and she goes, we want, and she was with her girlfriend. She goes, we want to watch The Exorcist. And I go, you want to watch The Exorcist? We've never seen it. And I go, and they were like, yeah, we've seen, you know, oh, they've yeah. seen all, right, the, right, right, all right. the Jason movies and right. all the Freddy movies and so you. forth. And so on. I go, all right, fine. And I said, but you got to watch it with the lights out and <laughs> everything dark, and I won't bother you. I'll let you guys watch it alone. Those two girls were crying <laughs> and my daughter said to me pop 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 do you have do you, do you have any holy water do you have any holy water <laughs> do you ha- do, did you huh? <laughs> yeah of course i have holy water yeah, it's called whiskey <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just good parenting <laughs> well, uh, same, same that's thing. what i have on sundays whiskey and holy water <laughs> um but the exorcist yeah. yeah yeah and science of the lambs a great one but exorcist was number one Still, and they're making a new one. They're rebooting it. Yes, yeah. I just found out about they're that. They're rebooting it. They're making it a whole franchise. I guess they're so going to go. They've already got one, two, and three planned, but no Linda Blair. Right. But mm. David Gordon Green, who is the he he's the director who did the reboot of Halloween. He's doing it. So I have some. Yeah. He's also a really great director. Uh, Halloween society. And Ellen Burstyn, yeah. who played the mom, is yep. coming back, or at least for the first for the one. first one. She no, is in her nineties. Yeah, but so. no Linda Blair. That is. Curious. Yeah, well, is William Freakin involved at all? Is William Freakin involved? I don't no. think so. Mm-mm. I don't no. think so. And, uh, and, he may and get a producer credit because I know uh, yeah. um, John Carpenter got a producer credit on the Halloweens, but he didn't have anything right, to do right. with it. Yeah. Mm. You ever read the book by William Freakin? I actually Black? did. Yeah. 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 Years book. ago. It's yeah. very creepy. Very creepy book. You can see why somebody jumped on that immediately. Yeah. And I guess oh, poor Linda Blair, I mean, I know she's good now, but I guess that film just messed her up. Yeah. Sure. Everything that they put her through to make it. And so forth and so on it had some lasting effects before it was all said. Yeah, there's actually the third a great, one's really good too. There's a great. The document- second one is terrible, but the, the second third one is awful. The third yeah, one is terrible. really good. There's a great documentary I believe called Leap of Faith, oh, yeah. uh, mainly about yeah. William Friedkin and making that movie. That's very, very good. So cool. there you go, some inside info to check out if you film lovers want to see more about that. But uh, good choices. I wish you guys nothing but the best and success. Uh, you'll be back on Whiskey Business come Oscar time again yeah. for our annual Oscar yes. podcast. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, uh, you know, thank you for signing this. I'm gonna hold <laughs> on to this. I am thank hold you. On to this. No, you thank you me? very I much. Get, I don't get rid of everything. And I go, guys. ah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. And I'm glad that this actually uh, came to fruition and became a feature film because that's exactly what it needed to be. So much, much success. Well, both thank of you, you so much. And uh, I can't wait to see what's going to be next because I know you're already planning the second oh, movie. Oh, right, right. Oh, planning oh. a second film. And also, before we go, give, give me Roost. I, we, we had Hope on by herself just to talk about this book. This is Hope Madden's book, Roost, which is a, another delightfully scary read. Uh, it's gotten great reviews as well, and it's available, right, as we speak? Yes, it is. Any place you buy books, you can also get the book, an autographed copy of the book, or, or Obstacle Corps t-shirts at our website at madwolf.com, two Ds. Just check the store there. All right. Hope Madden, George Wolf, give it up for him, Thank folks. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. 
Uh, one very specific thank you before the night is all said and done. You're enjoying the cocktails from Jesse Hubbard and 451 Spirits, but you're also yes. enjoying pizza <laughs> from Gatto's Pizza. Right here on Indianola Avenue you in the know. old Wildflower Cafe location. They used to be on North High Street forever. They moved uh, to this great location where there's indoor seating and you can sit inside and have a pie. If you got to get a pizza, you got to get a Gatto's. You do. Yes. Dino. Dino, they got, got the, it. Yeah. They have the great double Italian, too. The, the double Italian? The double Italian sub. The, oh, the double Italian sub. Have you had that recently? Uh, like twice. Twice? I've only yeah. had the single. It's a double. So, yeah, you had That's to have it I got it twice. Yeah. <laughs> so, so thank you thank you to uh, uh, my good buddy Dave DeRoberts and, and his son, um, who now have Gatto's and have, have, have taken it over and, uh, and still keep the Gatto's tradition alive as far as the recipes and the taste and so forth. I hope you enjoyed the pizza. There's still more of it. Uh, Dave brought in more pizza to make sure that you guys don't go hungry before the night What's is the all said What's the phone number? What's the phone number, David? What's the phone number, David? I can't swim. 263-3737. Wow. 263-3737. As a good host, I should have that written down, but no, yeah. I don't. As a producer, I should have given it to you an hour Yeah, ago. right. As a, so I, I, can, I can blame you. <laughs> But thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Gattos. <laughs> and a little bit of business before I bring up our next guest, Hansberry, if you don't mind. Let thank the you. people know. Whiskey uh, Business is the podcast. Not so much about whiskey as it is one with whiskey. You finally got it right. Yeah. Yay. I wrote that down. Yeah, good. Okay. An hour ago. I've only been saying it for five years, but that's okay. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing on your favorite podcasting app. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, leave reviews and stuff because that helps uh, Whiskey Business find new people. That's awesome. Um, if you're listening on uh, your favorite podcasting app, well, you know that this is a YouTube video. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. You can see all of these wonderful, beautiful people today, Uncut. right? Thank you. Uh, Thank Uncut. you. Uh, and that's uh, our yeah. video producer, John Whitney, on yeah. that side. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. Uh, it, it's uncut, and the camera was rolling in between segments, and if anybody stumbled and fell, well, you're going to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I want to do a shout-out to... To, to our buddy uh, Chip Cassell, who's uh, an, uh, I, I say he's our our fifth Beatle, even though there's only three of us. But Chip has been taking pictures and video, and he's been an integral part of the success of Whiskey Business. So give my buddy Chip a nice round. Right. Chip, yeah. Thank you, Chipper. Right, let me wrap it up. You, uh, so it's YouTube Whiskey Business with Dino Tripodis on YouTube. Smash that subscribe button. Smash. 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 Let's try it again. That's, Smash that's that subscribe button. That's evening, by the way. Smash. Smash. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and thanks to our podcasting uh, parents, Evergreen Podcast. That's who, right. they, they might kick us out of the house after yeah, this. Yeah, Evergreen Podcast. They've been so patient with us <laughs> <laughs> up in Cleveland. But if they, Evergreen has a, a, a huge array of podcasts for you to enjoy, and we're thrilled to be part of their family as well. Our next guest has been on Whiskey Business before, and he was one of our favorite guests as well because he had so many fascinating, scary, interesting stories, and he just put out a new book called Haunted Cemeteries of Ohio. Listen to the unrestful dead of the Buckeye State. It is a pleasure to welcome back E.R. Bucky Cutright, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, my friend. Thank you, my friend. For yeah, it's me. nice yes. to have you. And I wasn't kidding. I, that was one of the more fascinating podcasts. It's it's interesting that um, the last podcast you did was uh, right kind of in the smack dab. And we were kind of waning from the pandemic. So we did it outside and we safe distance. We did it in my backyard and my backyard bar. And now you're here. I, I think there's something probably uh, a sign, if you will, because I know that you believe in these types of things yeah. that you you shouldn't be in my house that's a that's a good 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 thought a good th- yeah yeah i might be i might leave something behind that you don't yeah. want uh. yeah. yeah well leave behind something i don't want but also you come across things how did you get involved 
in any of this. Now, we'll talk about the book specifically in a moment, but you personally, okay. how did you get involved in this world? So I, I was born this way, to quote. You know, I'm a, uh, Is that a Lady, Lady Gaga, Gaga song? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> We don't get to talk about Gaga uh, no, much no, no, on no, no. Uh, Whiskey I'm, Business, I'm, but when we I'm, do... I'm Bucky Goo Goo. Uh, <laughs> Bucky Goo Goo. <laughs> but I... Uh, yeah, yeah, when I was a little kid, I was around four years old, and I found out that my father was a carpenter, and uh, he wasn't that carpenter, in case you're a uh, super early... I've heard uh, that story uh, before. I found out my father was Doesn't a carpenter, end well. and, and that, that meant that he could uh, make things. And the very first thing I asked him to make was a uh, bunch of tombstones so we could have a cemetery uh, in our side yard. So, so I pretty much have a. Uh, why? My life. Why would you? What? Uh, see, I, I, it's kind yeah, like how, you, it's kind of like with Hope when I said, "Why are you afraid of the woods?" And she just said, "Why wouldn't I be?" Uh, you can't answer that question the same way. Why would you have your father make tombstones? There has to be a reason. You've dealt with the living. <laughs> Your whole life, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, as we speak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hansberry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Pardon me. Oh yeah. Um, by all means, have yeah. some bone sugar. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I mean, that's. A, I. I was just always fascinated with everything. Pass uh, spooky, this way, creepy, Pass mysterious. Um, uh, you know. Okay. I, I I love the idea of a uh, of another world. That Bucky, we're not... I, I, I have a Bucky, question for up, you. Hit me I, up, bro. I have yeah. a question. Pass it. <laughs> Bucky's the bartender. All of a sudden, do you need the lid? Oh, hey, yeah. Bucky, can I tell yeah, right can I tell you. people what you do on Tuesdays normally? Oh, sure. He's taking a night off of work. He's got a gig at the top. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I've been I've been slinging steaks. Uh, um, so it's, oh, okay. he's got the. I guess I'm saying he's got the whiskey pouring down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so you're bartending at the top? Uh, I, yeah, steaks. bartends serve, usually serve now. I like, I love the top. Yeah, it's, I did a commercial for the top. Oh, did, did yeah, you? Years ago, yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a classy uh, place. It's I, well, I've, I, I enjoy uh, contributing to the uh, slowing of people's uh, circulation. Yeah. <laughs> Because you want everybody to be dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, I saw, uh, I think it was an Instagram <laughs> or a Facebook video. I saw you driving, and in the back of your car mm -hmm. was a coffin. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't supposed to wind up on social media. I did accidentally. I thought I was sending yeah. that to a friend. Um, Why? No, uh, Why? Okay. Why, Bucky? <laughs> so for the the book launch of Haunted Cemeteries of Ohio, you know, uh -huh. I really, I, it's important to me to give back uh, to the community, uh, even as a small business owner and uh, skyrocketing prices. But I wanted to, um, uh, I wanted the book launch to be a benefit. So we did a, a thing for Greenlawn Abbey, which is a 1927 historic mausoleum uh, on. Green Lawn, uh, South German Village area, and their uh, stained glass windows are in a terrible state. Uh, they've been vandalized uh, because of its reputation as a haunted location for uh, decades, and um, so that's where we had the launch party, which is kind of fun to have it in a crypt. Sure. And, and, okay. um, right. and as part of it, uh, my friends Leslie and Costa, who are here tonight, um, uh, hey, hey, hey. the after after death plan, after life plan, um, uh, after death plan, excuse me. What? It's a I podcast a with yeah. whiskey. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it so, helps. So they, they they happen to have a um uh, they happen to have a uh, a coffin. Uh, oh, just happen to have a coffin. I'm glad they're uh, here yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah, so so <laughs> let's, oh, let's exchange uh, Look, social media. You seem like very nice people. I saw you came, but who the fuck happens to have a coffin? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's actually it was a neighbor that had it, and, and it was um, it's a old uh, uh, it's a neighbor that had it. Yeah, yeah. They got it from a neighbor. You look like, like right in between the Munsters and the Adams family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, so it's actually so it's interesting. It's a it's an old um, uh, Odd Fellows ca uh, casket, and and the Odd Fellows were a fraternal organization that would take it upon themselves to bury the um, uh, homeless uh, okay. people, and that's, and so it's this great. very and you can tell that people ate a lot uh, healthier back then because that thing is so thin and narrow. <laughs> like, um, uh, but but yeah, so they they lent that to me because I thought it would be uh, very appropriate for these books to be um, uh, presented for the first time. Uh, in a casket, and uh, yeah. so I borrowed that, and we were going to have a, um, uh, a procession, but there were so many people at that launch party, we couldn't really get a crowd through there, so it Bragger. just kind of stayed in spot. <laughs> yeah, I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm sorry. Did I tell you about my big launch? Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
But so, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, was, uh, oh yeah, my so god, that's a, hysterical. That's because uh, cemeteries make me stiff. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <Yeah>. so <laughs> should I not have said that? So, okay. with a uh, qu- question, did you? <laughs> Break the ice. Uh, gotcha. Thank you. Uh, almost on cue. Um, did you think at any point, if I get pulled over, what's my story? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things. So I was, I was, I was taking it back from the abbey, and I was driving through the cemetery because it was so large, and it was squeezed in the back of my car because it is a full size coffin, and I drive a Cherokee. That's not a hearse. So, so I was jammed in there sideways, and I was thinking, like, yeah, I'm going through a cemetery because I do tours at uh, Greenlawn uh, Cemetery, a day and night tours, and I'm, if, if the security team pulled me over there and I've got an authentic old fellows antique casket mm-hmm. uh, wedged in. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. there's going to have to be a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, some. There yeah. were just books in there, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it, <laughs> That's my sir. story and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's talk about the book for a second. Yeah. Do you know how I knew this was a good book? No, how did you know? Because you don't know how to read. I, exactly. Uh, <laughs> there's a, pre- a preface. An acknowledgement and an introduction. Ooh. It took it took me like two days just to get to the chapter one. <laughs> this is like a real book. <laughs> you and I have a lot of work to do, my friend. <laughs> the book Haunted Cemetery. Yeah, Haunted. He's an audio guy. I gave Hansberry recently. I gave him uh, George Orwell's 1984, and he thinks it's about Van Halen. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> When's Eddie coming in, man? (laughs) Uh, Haunted Cemeteries of Ohio is the book. And my first question right out of the gate is, Mm -hmm. uh, do we have some here in Columbus, Ohio that are haunted? Uh, Absolutely. Or cemeteries that have a reputation. I mean, is every cemetery, though, haunted on on some level? I mean, it is all dead people. Yeah. And you would think that spirits, resting or not, there'd be something going on in just about every cemetery, but this is more specific. These are things that have actually happened in certain cemeteries that have been documented. Well, um, what what I did with this book, uh, so there are over 15,000 active cemeteries in Ohio, and uh, a lot of them have stories of being haunted. And also, in addition to that, there are a bunch of little family cemeteries, that sort of thing. Um, uh, all over the place, the entire state was basically a graveyard for the ancient indigenous Ohioans with uh, burial mounds all over. We're uh, filming this not too far away from a bunch of these burial mounds. And he, he there says are, that in the uh, preface. Yeah, and there are. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah the, the so preface, you did get not to the, the preface. That's, okay, I, I right. clearly see that. But there are, th- there are thousands of these stories and trying to pick out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring any gold stars. No, I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. That's a, I'm out of stuff I, no, to talk no, about. No, no, trust now, me. Right I, I, I put him on my refrigerator <laughs> no, at home. He's good. But um, so finding finding that there's every cemetery seems to have some sort of folklore and uh, urban legends right. and stories and ghost stories and people have had random experiences around it and there are so many great ones I just didn't have room to put in the book but I tried to uh, narrow it down to um, uh, kind of about six uh, cemeteries in each geographic region uh, around the state and um, focus on ones that. Uh, it might not be apparent immediately in reading this, but I'm trying to tell the story of the history of Ohio mm. uh, through the cemeteries. And, um, you know, I think it was Ben Franklin that said, show me your cemeteries and I'll tell you about your people. And um, we You start- think? You know that it was really Ben Franklin. Well, you, uh, oh, I think it is. No, uh, dude, this is your business. You know yeah, it's Ben Franklin. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. I oh, I think. That's a, that's a disclaimer in case the whiskey uh, <laughs> sent me the wrong direction. But, yeah. Uh, the idea is um, through this is like uh, we start with these ancient uh, we start with Mound Cemetery in Marietta that was uh, um, has a, uh, a two thousand year old uh, indigenous burial mound in it and then we move to uh, towards the end of the book it's uh, Lakeview and Cemetery which is probably the most actualized uh, rural Victorian cemetery in Ohio um, these cemeteries that were supposed to be uh, open air history and art museums mm. and every monument I call them participation trophies usually these days but every one of them is a work of art and and it shows how uh, civilization in the state of Ohio 
has uh, gone to this level of mortuary appreciation. Yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of ironic that cemeteries are actually quite beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's at the beginning of COVID, I was telling people, get out there, go visit these places there. They are art museums, they're um, history museums, and uh, everyone's socially distanced. What's your speak. favorite in Ohio? Yeah, that's my, uh, well, go ahead, John. Yeah, go ahead. That's, because, uh, you know, thanks not for stealing to say the question. Columbus is the best. But no, but I want to know about yeah. what we can Gosh. see in Columbus that's supposedly haunted. But what's a, your, what is your favorite so, cemetery? I, that is so hard for me to say. I, it's like uh, picking a favorite child. Mm-hmm. I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I, so I, have, I have thousands and thousands of them. They might all um, listen to the podcast. But, but there are, there are um, I mean, some of the, one really beautiful one that I, I never visited until I started doing research was in Wellston, Ohio, um, a church called Salem Cemetery Church. And uh, mm. that it, it's this really secluded but beautiful, peaceful, just gorgeous little old cemetery. Um, uh, mm. But like Lakeview, uh, Greenlawn Spring Grove is the largest cemetery in the state. And that one is stunning to, to visit. You, it's uh, 700 plus acres and you can get lost in there and would not be sad for doing so. Okay, so I have two questions then. That's your favorite? Yeah. Uh, those are those. Uh, as you're trying to pick. Sure. But Wait, if we, Salem, if, you said, is your favorite? Spring Grove, probably. Okay. All right. is but if I mean. we were to pick a, a cemetery, you know, people who love to do spooky things on Halloween, if we were to mm-hmm. focus on a cemetery here in central oh. Ohio, in Columbus, which one that's in this book, or uh, I would imagine if, if there was one, it would be in this book, which one should they visit and what happened? At that okay. particular cemetery. Well, I'd say uh, probably one of the more chilling is a uh, little Pennsylvania cemetery in Darbydale, which is down near uh, the Trapper Johns um, uh, on the southwest side. That is, it's more commonly referred to as Wooly Booger Cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <ooh>. Um, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So that, you, you become a just a tad cynical, I think, <laughs> <laughs> over the years with your dead people, yeah, 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 <laughs> Willie Booger, yeah, whatever. Yeah, Willie Booger, but well, it's just the name. It seems a little ridiculous, but I do think I discovered in this book, uh, in the research, why it actually has that name, which has been a mystery for a while. But that place, um, there's most of the people there's a, there's a little girl who died that was hit by a car. Um, uh, buried there there's uh, you know most of there's a poet of darby dale oh sorry um uh, i was like drink faster um uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <We can. laughs> cheers oh oh he will right, here we go there we go cheers, cheers. Right. Right. Good right. luck. Cheers. come on come on come on, come on. he's getting ready to tell something so, chilling let's so. stop let's go make it really scary this time this is what yeah um I have your uh, sound effects at the ready, no, and Greg. Let's not. Give me, give me. <laughs> I haven't used the owl. I'm about one to take that away from you. So that was an owl. So the so the thing about um, uh, this little Pennsylvania or Wooly Booger Cemetery, it's got a lot of stories. I've had so many people um, uh, over the years tell me that oh, you know I'm not so big on this stuff, but that place, uh. Uh-uh. And uh, right before I actually got the book deal, and the publisher was the one that asked me to write about haunted cemeteries, and I was like, okay, that's a good fit. I wasn't intending on that being a subject of a book of mine originally. Um, Right before that, I had a friend, an internet friend. I've never really known her in real life. She uh, uh, became close friends with one of my old roommates that since lives in Illinois. And this girl had just moved here. And um, she was a sensitive a medium someone who could see things mm-hmm. and apparently her boyfriend decided he thought it'd be a lot of fun if he drove her around to these different haunted locations to see if uh, she got sort of a vibe or anything mm-hmm. and I got this long uh, message from this girl out of the blue who I've never met in person just saying what in the fuck is going on at, at the cemetery down by this canoe livery on the south side she didn't know the name of the cemetery anything like that she got these flashes of um a girl having her skull bashed in, um, uh, all these different like violent images uh, just shooting into her brain. And she almost broke up with her boyfriend because she was so upset that he took her to this place without giving her any warning Mm -hmm. of where he was taking her. And um, it turns out that uh, the cemetery has been the site of countless violent deaths Mm. over the years. And this, this is this tiny little actually pleasant looking rural cemetery in the south uh you know southwest franklin county but um uh so many people have been uh killed there there was a guy from columbus who uh, moved out to kansas city i believe it was and he was uh, dating this girl but it turned out he had a wife here and when uh, his uh his girlfriend found out that he was married in columbus uh, she got mad at him and he uh killed her 
shoved her in a trunk, brought her down here, uh, dumped her body in a Darby Dale uh, right there next to the cemetery. Kind um, of a uh, severe first choice. Yes, right? yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's indeed. Um, uh, there, there were people that got sh- uh, shot hunting, dropping their rifles uh, in, in around the cemetery. There was a, a car dealer in the early 80s who um, a couple kids who were living at the um, YMCA decided they were going to steal a, a Trans Am or Camaro, a Z28 is what it was actually. And so they asked him that to take the a first test mistake. drive. That was really yes, spooky. Yes, exactly. It was a, had the red light, the zoom, zoom. And they, but they, they took the, the car dealer down there, uh, tied him up, uh, took him down to the cemetery in the lake behind it and murdered him. And uh, there was a, shortly after that, there was a landlord from Old Town East who um, uh, was having a date with his girlfriend in German Village, and they were attacked by a, a carjacker that took them down there to the cemetery. And uh, <laughs> the, uh, once they got to the cemetery, the, uh, the victim, the male victim, got away from the uh, carjacker and shot him and killed him in the car. And it turned out it was Jesus. one of his employees who was supposed to be married the next day and was a completely on the level guy. So why he suddenly violently carjacked his. Uh, boss it's just so many strange things and there was also a woman who um, uh, was found in a uh, garbage uh, I don't mention that in the book because it was relatively recent but there was a woman's body who uh, was in a custody dispute with a, her baby daddy and her body was found in a garbage barrel there so, Dear so Lord. that place has got some bad, bad yeah. stuff going on for a little country cemetery <laughs> but beautiful during yeah, the yeah, day yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> Wow! Mm-hmm. Wow! Wait, so that was the uh, Southgate yeah. Springgate again. What was that one? Oh, that cemetery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. That, that's a Little Pennsylvania Cemetery, Ooh, or more okay. commonly referred to as Wooly Burger. All right, Wooly Burger. Uh, yes, in uh, near Darbydale. Let me ask you this: um, With all the years that you've been doing, do you feel that as a result of just doing all this type of work and all this type of research, do you? And you said you had a friend who, who's a, a medium. Mm-hmm. Do you do you believe in that? And do you also two part question? Do you believe in it? And do you also feel that you possess something like that that makes you gravitate towards this type of research and this type of work? Are you connected somehow? Okay. So well, you know, I think that um, uh, I, people do seem to be predisposed. We can know things that we're not really have any reason for knowing uh, mm-hmm. it's it's uh, you know that's I, I believe that we're all intuitive yeah we're all intuitive we're yeah. all intuitive to a degree and some people have a higher level of that in, of mm-hmm. that intuition and develop it mm-hmm. and and use it and then and then there's some people who take it to the next step and say that i'm you know i'm a psychic yeah. or i'm a medium and yeah. but i basically believe in my heart that it's just intuition and some highly develop more than others i think yeah i think it's a, a Pretty much, a, it's a, it's just a natural human ability that most of us refuse to or don't hone. You know, mm-hmm. I, you know, there was a study in the, I, the 80s and 90s uh, with Juilliard uh, students uh, versus uh, just some, um, you know, like engineering students where they would do these psychic um, uh, tests to s- show cards and be like, do you know what's on the right, other side? Of this? Right. And the Juilliard, the, the musicians and artists, uh, they scored much, much higher uh, than uh, statistically would be you know, uh, chance, uh, on that stuff. So and I why think, is that? Uh, because musicians are left brain, you know, maybe the left brain requires, open. Yeah, yeah. The, it re- requires more of a, uh, um, an openness, I think. So, so do you yeah. feel that you possess those type I c- of I c- gifts? I could, I try not to you though. Try, why? Because I do this for a living. I don't want to bring my work home with me, you know, uh, <laughs> and, uh, Good question. Yeah. Does your work come home with oh, you? Yeah, has your work yeah, come yeah, home with has, you? Yeah, it has. It has. I, I don't know if we've uh, addressed that on uh, the last time I was on here or not. But yeah, I've had a few things happen occasionally from time to time at home. And, like what? Well, uh, you know, when I very first started doing these, and I'm going on my 10th year of uh, giving ghost tours and that sort of thing in town, uh, I was writing a uh, Facebook post uh, telling a local ghost story. And I think it might have even been about this uh, Wooly Booger Cemetery, actually, if I remember correctly. But uh I was at home alone and I was typing this story and in the corner of my living room, I had a old uh, four wheel drive um, monster truck uh, toy that someone had given me as a Mm -hmm. a gift and it was just sitting there. I'd never played with it because I'm about 50 at this point, you know, (laughs) but, but I left it in the corner of my living room for a while and um, 
uh, it, been there for a couple of years and batteries certainly had to be dead. It was turned off and all that stuff. But right when I uh, hit enter on the um, uh, post to send it, this monster truck flew across the living room floor, which uh, was quite shocking yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and then shortly after i think uh, i found a um a footprint on the ceiling of my uh, porch uh it, it, it's about 12 feet up uh, I, I i i went out uh one morning to have a cigarette i'm no longer a smoker but i was having a cigarette took a stretch and i went like that and there was a a bare footprint uh 12 feet in the air um just on the ceiling of my my porch, and that was disturbing. Yeah, no, no neighbor kids that caused that. No neighbor kids. Uh, no, uh, uh, no. All my neighbor kids are short. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Did yeah. You, no. did, did you stop to think about anything you had done prior to seeing that footprint? That it might be. Did you connect? Oh it to uh, no, I had a pretty normal night before that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I really. Oh. That was okay. a good laugh. So that was you, Johnny. Uh, well, uh, now, uh, now I have not hear nothing. Hold on, John. Just bring the house that's, down a second. That's just the uh, house, Avi. Don't worry about. It. Okay. Don't All right. There we go. So yeah, no, I no, I hadn't really been doing anything out of the ordinary. Nothing. Nothing. Drinking. No, no, it was in the morning. Drinking. <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that day. <laughs> not that morning. And I said cigarettes, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, in this book, what is, in your opinion, I want, once again, two-part question. The scariest story in this book, I mean, they're all pretty scary. And then I want to know what's the, the most scared you've ever been. Okay, while well, doing this or? Uh, just well, like, if they go hand in hand, right. so be it. Okay, so I'd, th I'd say one of the, uh, the more uh disturbing stories for me in the book that I found while researching there's a uh, um, there's a section about a uh, the Lima hospital for the criminally insane and that uh, w it was an actual horror story uh, doing the research on that and the things that uh, the happened with the uh, inmates uh, or patients rather and uh, and also with the um, guards and the interaction there it was uh, it was it was beyond belief um, doing the research and what I uncovered in that and that place was very grim I can assure you the old uh, well the, 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 just the that phrase cemetery. the criminally insane yeah. I mean it's mm -hmm. bad enough you're criminal and it's mm -hmm. bad enough you're insane mm -hmm. but if you put the two together oh yeah. my god you've got monsters yeah well well the thing was is unfortunately they weren't very good at um, uh, differentiating between the criminal and the insane and um, so there were people that were uh, you know that had slight um, mental health issues that were being housed in a cell or a, a patient room with a very, very violent people. And, so uh, people that would, that could have been helped that shouldn't have been there. Oh, yeah. And as a result of being there, mm -hmm. I mean, once again, mm -hmm. you, you hear all this all along about sometimes being uh, uh, trapped in, in an environment that uh, kind of like a, a, almost like a Stockholm syndrome of sorts mm -hmm. if you, you actually become where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well... There's that. Um, uh, then there's also instances like in the book I mentioned a story where there was a young boy who um, uh, had kind of gotten in trouble because he was giving his parents problems and they ended up throwing him in this uh, asylum uh, prison system. And his best friend ended up becoming this uh, elderly gentleman who had uh, one day chopped his wife to pieces with an axe and dumped her body down a well. And uh, this was shortly after the asylum opened one day uh they were best friends uh the elderly gentleman lured this young boy into the basement and then um uh brutally murdered him with oh a hammer God. and uh so um yeah there's lots of uh, lots and lots and lots of really horrifying stories in there so that that one was really disturbing for me um uh particularly a lot of the uh the guards um were uh mistreating the patients there and uh they got away with it and even while I was doing research, I found these um, message boards where it would be people who had clearly been patients talking about the situation and then someone who was clearly a guard saying, screw you, I know who you are, you deserve to be locked up, you should be dead, I should have beaten you with a, you know, and it's just, it's, it's wow. uh, sending shivers down the spine. Yeah, it's and, sending and, shivers and, down mine right now. Yeah, and yeah. so, I mean, so the book, it is haunted cemeteries and hauntings can be a lot more than ghosts, you know? Sure. And, and I address that. At, 
equal Some, parts in there. Yeah, so. sometimes the evil is living and breathing as yeah. we speak. Yeah. Wow. So, but I but one of the scarier stories I've from me yeah, um, in this book. Is, so uh, it's not in the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the ones I couldn't oh, put in there because it was too. Right. So there there is a cemetery I write about. <laughs> You'll get this when we go home. Oh, come on, Dad. <laughs> so there's a, there's a cemetery <laughs> in southern Ohio, and I, I can't mention uh, what it, the name of it is, and that'll be obvious for uh, uh, in a moment um, why. But I was researching uh, one of the cemeteries for the book, and a historical society was like, okay, yeah, we'll tell you about that one, but this is where you really want to go. Oh, and <laughs> and, and this, it was a cemetery there. The historical society had uh, Boy Scouts do um, uh, renovation projects uh, on these uh, various cemeteries, and each Boy Scout was assi uh, assigned to a different uh, pioneer cemetery, and they were uh, cleaning them up and doing that sort of thing. And at one of the cemeteries, there was a, what's called a chest uh, coffin or uh, tomb. So these are uh, above ground. It's not a burial technically, so there's a there's a casket set on the ground, and around it is kind of like a uh, chest, like a you know like a a treasure chest or that sort of thing, but it's made out of brick and it has a uh, a big marble slab on top. And uh, at this one particular cemetery, one of those had collapsed, and it exposed uh, this Fisk casket, and. Uh, a what type of casket? Okay, a fisk casket is what, what is a fisk. Called. So, casket. so these were cast iron um, uh, sarcophagus that were popular in the mid 1800s, mm. and um, they were uh, they didn't look so much like a, a coffin or a, a, a casket as you would know today. They looked more like an Egyptian uh, mummy kind of thing, and they were they were they fit a form of right. a human. So it look it would look just like a person in a shroud, you know, with their arms crossed over their chest and feet and everything. It looks like an Egyptian like a mummy. Uh, cast. Yeah. And over the face of these things, they would usually have a glass uh, viewing window and they would commonly be used for um, people. Who, this was in the mid 1800s, people who died of infectious diseases and they were hermetically sealed. So they couldn't uh, uh, therefore have germs and that sort of thing seep out into the, uh, groundwater and uh so that's what this person was buried in and that's why they had them buried in a chest tomb instead of in the ground as well because they died at a time that coincided with a uh <laughs> an infectious a outbreak pandemic there. yeah so yep yeah i know i used to have mm -hmm. to explain what those were I, I, but um so 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 this thing had collapsed and it just exposed this coffin and it's just sitting there out on the ground and I was like well I've got to see that <laughs> but yeah. the but the woman um, uh, and it had the glass window and you can just see the skull rolling around like a grape and you know but um, like actually rolling around well if you moved it like well, you know but it was cast iron but so maybe I've been did you move it no so this is why not <laughs> uh, but the, the the historical society went on to explain to me so these uh, Boy Scouts were doing this uh, renovation project and the one who had worked on that cemetery uh he'd completed it and he was in front of the historical society with his little uh paperwork getting ready to give his pres presentation and the phone rang right as he stood up and it was this um a call to inform them that the guy who was a caretaker for that cemetery the tractor had flipped over and uh killed him instantly and this, the, the historical society went to this exposed coffin, lightly covered it with some gravel and leaves and things, and then slowly backed away. I was like, okay, yeah, but I did want to see it still. I didn't care. So you do have, would you consider yourself to be morbidly curious about a lot of things? Yes. Who isn't? Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> I'm not that morbidly. Yeah. Well, you know what? I take that back. There we go. I take that back. Right. I, you know, I think about some of the things that I've seen over the years, and yeah. I am morbidly uh, curious. I think we all are. We, you know, you know, mm -hmm. one day we're going to buy a tube of toothpaste and we're not going to be there at the end of it. And, you know, any indication of what might happen on the other side. Is wow, I'm almost at the end of my <laughs> yeah. tube of toothpaste. <laughs> I might not brush my teeth anymore. <laughs> yeah, but Squeeze but that sucker out. We'll make that last yeah, a little yeah, longer. Yeah, no, no. But, but, yeah, so, you know, I mean, I was just uh, – I don't know. I mean, I, I wanted to go see that, that um, uh, casket, and I got to that cemetery, and uh, – I could see where it was and it was covered with damp leaves and 
I went to scrape away the leaves and I just couldn't bring myself mm. to do it. You know, it felt very um, invasive. Well, well, I know that it is yeah, it is an aptly so, but uh, but also, um, uh, I did not feel alone uh, uh, there. I must say that. Okay, that was, so once again, I go back to that. You 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 do get those feelings. You yeah, do, yeah. You you do pick that up. Yeah, and I usually try to uh, block them out with um, you know, uh, um, episodes of uh, the Golden Girls or. Uh, is that what does it for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, some old Barney on YouTube or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Teletubbies. <laughs> a co- I'm, I'm, All right, there's no sound effect for the Teletubbies. <laughs> Barney that, Miller. That's, a, that's right. a different thing. <laughs> in box. Those are scary all on their own. They don't need a sound effect. All right, so before we go, uh, a couple of things. This book is available everywhere, yes? Uh, yes, for the most part, yes. I, I'm, I'm surprised. It is uh, through the History Press in Arcadia. I don't think uh, they're carrying it right now at the Book Loft or a couple of the other local places, but Barnes & Nobles uh, should have it. Uh, you can buy it at ColumbusGhostTours.com directly from me. I have a big box of them here tonight. Yeah, you they, can get uh, it here tonight if you want uh, to. Yeah, I have, I, have a, have I have some change and a, um, uh, not a, a Sharpie casket. and a... And a and a coffin. I know the coffin is. And I, I didn't fit tonight, but I also have a, a, a tap. <laughs> oh a gosh, I know, shucks! I know. He's got a sarcophagus. I, sh- I could have. Yeah, and, and actually, it's kind of funny that thing's resting on two electric chairs in my garage right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, He's two electric kidding. chairs. <laughs> you have electric chairs in your garage? They're prop. Why? Um, well, so uh, Katie Rendazzo that had the restaurant Ambrose and Eve, um, we did a, a, a true crime a death dinner uh-huh, several uh-huh, years ago. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, was, no matter what you say, it's not gonna it's not gonna <laughs> matter. But go ahead. Explain. So anyway, we use those. We had a couple of these uh, real life electric chairs sort of things that you could uh, uh, for an upcharge you could sit in one of those and eat uh, <laughs> dinner inspired by the last an request upcharge. of uh, convicted serial killers. <laughs> and, and uh, Katie just moved to L.A. and she uh, said, you probably want these, don't you? And, yeah. Yeah. I just didn't have any space in my living room, though. So they're in the, they're in the garage right now. Comfortable? Uh, yeah, they are comfy. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, well, particularly with their two, you could use one as an ottoman. Um, <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> Here you go, Hansberry. Wong, <laughs> <laughs> wong. Is there uh, going to be a Haunted Cemeteries of Ohio 2? Um, probably, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, there's enough material, certainly, to do right. that. Although, I have to say, like, the, um, I, when the pandemic happened, I started uh, trying to write a book, and, I, and then I just sort of kind of willed this into being because I was approached by a publisher, you know, as I was already working on a couple manuscripts of my own. And uh, there's a couple different subjects I want to write about rather than cemeteries, so I don't know. But, but there are enough cemetery stories, that's for sure. Okay, a couple of indulgent questions before we go. Um, do you believe in ghosts? Yes. That would be a yes. There, yes. There, there are certainly things that people have experiences. Yeah, what a ghost is. Do you believe in ghosts? I do believe in ghosts, but a def- the definition of a ghost is kind of a, you know all over the place. Do you believe in vampires? No. No? Because <laughs> th- if anybody in this room would be a vampire, I think it would be you. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen him in daylight. Maybe ask me a <laughs> Ask me again in a few more years. <laughs> uh, and uh, do, do you have a significant other? Yes, yes, I do. Yeah. And is she creepy as well? Oh, it's he. Is uh, he? Is uh, he creepy? I'm sorry. Oh yeah. no, no, no. Um, uh, eh, he he doesn't he doesn't have the same passion for this sort of thing as I do. But he's, so how's that work out? He, uh, well, he's. Uh, he's extremely patient. Uh, I would. Well, well, well <laughs> that's any How's he feel about having a coffin in the back of the Cherokee? Uh, well, well, he he uh, he managed to squeeze himself into the front seat and uh, make room for it. So, <laughs> you know, um, uh, yeah. So so he's uh, yeah. Like I said, he's been very patient for it, and he's been and he does a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, for us, um, with the with the business, with the ghost tours and that sort of thing. So, That's awesome. Yeah. So and uh, yeah. So yeah. So he's uh, managed to be pretty cool with it. Okay. Uh-huh. And one last question: mm-hmm. Did you dress up like this tonight for the podcast, or is this like everyday attire? Oh yeah, I didn't know we were supposed to dress up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> ER cut writer. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're back to wrap up this edition of our first Halloween special at 451 Spirits. Uh, 
And I think it's appropriate to wrap up our show with the two people who I swear to God, uh, uh, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I just go and show up and talk and do what I'm supposed to do. If I did not have my video producer, John Whitney, and my audio producer, Greg Hansberry, doing all the stuff that's connected to this thing, this podcast wouldn't happen. But in respects to this particular podcast tonight, if it weren't for the two individuals I'm about to introduce you to officially, tonight's Halloween special would not have occurred. So give it up for Jesse Hubbard over there to my far left over there, who's been mixing your cocktails this evening. Mixing the 451 spirits that are distilled by the mad scientist of local distillers and host tonight, Chad Kessler of 451 spirits as well. It is fitting, mad scientist. I call it, yeah, yeah, man. I'm telling you, it all works out. And um, I I wanted to close out with these guys because I normally we talk about the whiskey a little bit in the beginning of the podcast, and then we we come back. (laughs) and talk about what we thought of the whiskey, which I love. This is the first time I've had the Bone Shaker. So I'm first going to go to uh, Chad and tell me what is all involved in Bone Shaker whiskey and what is kind of the philosophy of distilling here at 451. You want the real story or am I going to make something up? No, I want the I want the real st- I want the real scary story. <laughs> it's, yeah. not scary. it's not scary. I, I, I'm a giant nerd is the real story. Uh, yeah. Yeah, worked retail for a long time in beer and liquor, and as soon as I got into drinking, started exploring craft whiskey, craft beer, and just felt like there could be more creativity in distilling. So I didn't want to make the same stuff that other people made. And you're not. So yeah, you're not uh, so the that same whiskey stuff. is basically a distilled stout. So barley, mm. rye, oats, and then roasted barley, compared to bourbon, which is mostly corn. Mm-hmm. Love bourbon, but plenty of people already make it. So it's yeah. not yes. There, you don't have that sweet corn taste. Uh, it, I, I anything that doesn't taste like bourbon to me tastes like scotch. So I'm going to say it's got a scotch. Uh, no, vibe. not no. I I I think it's got more Meant of a to be rye. like a cross between like scotch and American style whiskey. Yeah. So. I, I I taste the I I like the rye. This and I'm a big mm-hmm. rye fan. So, but this is delicious and uh, scarily if if I could you know keep the theme of the podcast delicious because it goes down really. Look at this. I mean. It's almost gone. We started with a full bottle. I know it wasn't just me. Was it? Was it just me? Man, no, was it, it just me? No. It was. No one is here right now. Yeah, right? Now. right? <laughs> How'd you come up with the name Bone Shaker? I mean, that you have is, some unique names for your for your for your spirits. Yeah, they all have cute names. Anytime I try to like go to a <laughs> liquor store or bar and like pitch it to people, they're like, "Oh, how high were you when you came up with that name?" Um, and you tell them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was really high. Um, but no, bone shakers are not of the old school bicycles that had two different size wheels. You had the bone shaker and the penny farthing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started off aging in two different size barrels. And so that was my nod to that. And bone shaker sounds a hell of a lot cooler than penny farthing. I yeah, searched, yeah. I searched bu- bone shaker on my computer at work and they, they called me up. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why they would have called me up for that. <laughs> I'm still trying and, to figure it out. And so, so now you guys in the audience, you're actually here at 451. So it's kind of a unique place. You know, we've been uh, we've done uh, a lot of podcasts with other distillers, and they're very. Uh, and I'm not taking anything away from it, but they're very formulaic and unique in their own way. But they're very standard. They have their big. You know, there's. You're not going to walk. Typical. You're, yeah, they're, you're not going to walk into any of the other local distillers and see artwork. This great artwork. I mean, what's that about, Chad? You got great art. You're an artist as well. Yeah. Yeah. Artist. Yeah. 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 I make whiskey and I and I create beautiful art. Try to be a musician. Try to be the musician. Uh, yeah, you got a great band. I, I'm the entire corporate board, so that's part of it. Yeah, yeah. all by your lonesome. Yeah, I'm. All, I'm also the janitor. Yeah, you have you a meeting tell, and you're like around. approved. Um, it really came in handy because we were decorating and there was cobwebs everywhere. <laughs> it was, it was per- I used it was to perfect. get so Thanks, upset Jesse. when I did like formal tours. Like people would like, like, oh, there's cobwebs. You're gonna clear this. I'm like, no, the spiders are our friends here. He's preparing I for this Halloween for special all year there long. There are so many fruit flies in this place. When I'm in the middle of production, I'm, I want, I want all the spiders I can get. Please yeah, sure. Fruit flies, amazing. So they're welcome here. <laughs> How many of them. you guys out here have been uh, to 451 before? Anybody? Anybody? There's a handful a of handful? people out there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, it's a unique place. Do you, you do tours and stuff, Chad? 
I'm just open now. Okay. So that, that was something that came about during the pandemic. I used to do formal tours four times a week, and I started to go a little bit crazy doing it. Yeah, yeah, I, I was here for one. You are, you're not the best tour guide. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have heard quite the opposite, sir. <laughs> Anything but else you want to know? Sometimes. <laughs> no, you were great. I'm, I'm kidding. Like, I'm kidding. I don't know if I said that today or yesterday. I'm kidding. 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 You're great. You're awesome. And how'd you hook up with Jesse Hubbard over? Jesse, thank you, by the way, buddy. Yes. We yes. got to Jesse. tell us. Jesse. Oh, thanks, everybody. The, thanks. the cocktail... The cocktails you made tonight, one of them was an award-winning cocktail, correct? Yes, but I just wanted to point out, you notice how I got everybody nice and liquored up when it was time for me to get the round of applause? Right, 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 yeah. I just want to point that out. This is not my first rodeo. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, what was your question? I'm sorry. The the cocktails you made tonight, one of them was an award-winning cocktail. Yeah, like all three of them, this is the first time that I've ever, uh, you know, done them. They're like, you know, it's fun riffs on things. I like to always always keep it fresh and do, like, man, I love Halloween. I, I... Love Halloween so much, almost as much as Hansberry, and almost and on, honest, honestly, I mean, it's just really fun to kind of do like fun, spooky things and have fun garnishes. So yeah, it was it was it was fun. It was cool. Yeah, those you you spent more at the dollar store than uh, anybody just on these cocktails. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, the eyeballs, dollar uh, for those listening. Yeah, eyeballs, uh, vampire teeth, gummies, the gummies. The yeah, little, yeah. Little, like, that was a Target purchase. Uh, it's a little, little pricier. And those apple, uh, <laughs> ca- caramel apple suckers. Just yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, now, thanks, we, thanks, we recently had both Jesse and Chad on the podcast not too long ago when they were uh, when they when the two minds came together and, and made a, a coffee infused rum called uh, Rag and Bone. Right. Yes, sir. And so uh, uh, first of all, I'll, I'll talk about that again and remind people about that in a second. But how did you two spirits, so to speak, come together and combine? You want to take it? You want me to take it? Being oh. kindred spirits, yeah. we're both in the industry, but on different ends, and just realized yeah. we had a lot in common. So, like, fun tie-in to the evening, actually. We first met, I used to bartend uh, when the whiskey bar existed at the Westin, and uh, that's how I met uh, Bucky, was he would come in with his ghost tours, yeah. and they would have cocktail hour beforehand. Oh, I had no idea you knew Bucky. We, yeah, yeah. It was, I haven't seen him in forever. It was super, super cool to, like, be here tonight and uh, just hear him talk about his stories. I've always wanted to go on one of your uh, your tours. I definitely, after hearing everything tonight, but like they would come in and have the fun cocktail hour, and then they'd go on and you know, like I just catch little snippets of it, and then I'm like, wait a minute, is this place haunted? Like like where I'm standing, what happened? You know what I mean? Like I hear snippets of it, and just enough to freak me out. But um, uh, that was super fun. But yeah, we met whenever I was working there, and he came in with his product, and I thought it was awesome, and we started carrying it, and we both love rock and roll, we both love you yeah. know whiskey, spirits, we love art. And it just kind of came time to, like, let's do some cool shit together, man. Like, let's let's collaborate on something. You know? uh, I, was awesome. I, I find it interesting that you both have your jobs that you do, but you're both creative beasts as well. I mean, you got your first book that came out not too long ago. We had you on the podcast for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that book is doing well. What's the name of that book? Tell everybody again. Very simply uh, titled so people know exactly what it's about. Punk Rock and Cocktails. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it is about punk rock and, and cocktails. cocktails. Right, I thought about a catchy title. I'm like, just why beat around the bush? It is what yeah, it is. Yeah, just you know call what I mean? it what it is. Call it what Do it is. Do you have some here if anybody wants to pick one up? I didn't bring any. Okay, um, I'm an idiot. You know what? No, <laughs> you know what? No, he's not. Still, no, I'm still working on the no. marketing Look part. Look at me. I'm using, I'm using my bottle as a pointer now. No, <laughs> no, he's not an idiot. He's a humble man. He said tonight isn't about my book. It's about this podcast. So he purposely didn't bring his books tonight. Good but save. they are available as we speak everywhere and you're working on a new one as well i am yeah it's it's done actually um but so i, I released the first one with a local publisher and it's been awesome uh i've had some interest uh from some slightly larger publishing companies so i wanted to have it out by now but kind of gonna see where it takes me and so looking at early 2023 that'd be out and about but um yeah it's so it's me just writing about my experience with rock and roll a bunch of bands that i love and i create original cocktails for each one of these bands, uh, break it down, how you can make it. And some of them are a little bit more complex and a little bit more simple. Uh, but I make it so everybody can make it at home. And it's like, listen to some music, make some cocktails, a social thing. And oddly enough, this started during the pandemic and I was really longing for those social atmosphere. So, uh, that's, that was, that's uh, ironically kind of good timing because people were stuck yeah. in their homes and yeah. what, a, what a great combination to bring the music and the, for sure. And, and the cocktails together. For sure, yeah. Um, no, it's a great book. It's 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 it, and it's a great coffee table book. It's yeah. it's on my coffee table as we speak, and it's Thanks, it's, it's just it's well written, 
It's got great pictures. It's and, in my uh, uh, record got, collection because it's the it, same size. Yeah, as same a size as a record, right? <laughs> it's cool. On on purpose. That's probably my favorite thing is people think they're getting a record when I ship it. Yeah. And they open it up like it's a book. You know, it's oh, literally the same size of an LP. Again. Yeah. <laughs> so 2023 right for the pages. next one. You said things were slowing you down. Like I don't know. Whiskey business, Halloween podcast, to get in the way and slow things down a little bit. Man, I apologize. This, no, man, this is. I've had so much fun like working on this with you guys and putting this together. Somebody asked earlier, like, how do you guys all know each other? And it's like we're all friends, you know. Like Dino keeps inviting me on a show for some reason. I don't know why, <laughs> but God bless him. He keeps having me on. And uh, you know, like Hansberry's a buddy, like John, Chip, dogs every, sit Charlie. E- everybody. You know, what's that? We dog sit Charlie. Yeah, they, they Hansberry sit. and his and his lovely family dog sit like my puppy. And when I finally got you know? Chad on, I owed him a huge apology because he was the one, you know, missing link of the distillers that actually when we started talking about having distillers on, Hansberry said, you know, do you know Chad Kessler four fifty one? And I actually came on a tour one afternoon and checked it out and 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 is that if it, anybody is weird enough to like collaborate with us it's going to it, be, be, be Chad so <laughs> uh, and uh, also also I'll be talking to Chad again and now by the time this podcast drops it'll already have happened so I apologize but I'm going to be moderating a whiskey round table this Saturday and Chad Kessler from 451 Spirits will be one of the distillers that'll be at that round table this Saturday, are you gonna which, get some video, John? Yeah, I don't know. I, you know I what? Don't I don't think know. I've we gotten got, permission we, to do that. No, he just that? wants a drink. No, I don't have clearance to do that. You don't have clearance to do that. I need clearance, brother. Clearance, you clearance, need clearance, clearance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, what I neg- you know they said you know they asked me to be the moderator and, and they said we can't pay you much and I said don't pay me just uh, give me tickets for my boys. So we got tickets. V o y z. Z. I have a question. I was yeah, I was thinking about this earlier. You guys were talking um, about scary movies and whatnot. I want to know like all y'all's favorite scary movie. All right, it's Halloween. Start with Hansberry over there. The Shining. Okay, that's it. Well, th- my, so my that's favorite. That's it. E- the, 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 easily, easily, it's my favorite it. movie. The scariest movie, Paranormal okay. Activity. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you the first one. The first one. Yeah. yeah that's the first only ones one that's are always good. the best yeah. ones. Uh, it, uh, George mentioned it in, in his segment there. The Exorcist still, I, mm-hmm. as many times as I've seen it, I like, yeah. mm, still kind of creeps me out a little bit and makes me do this, yeah. do the sign of the cross before it's all said and done. I'm very curious about yours. <laughs> it's probably something yeah. weird we've never heard of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah mine, mine are goofy. Uh, I have two. Uh, Murder Party, which is yeah. about a bunch of, uh, yeah. yeah. The the only George and Hope respond. Murder party is an art project, <laughs> and everything just kind of goes to hell. Uh, and then my other one is uh, poultry guys, not poltergeist. Oh. Hope and George, you're still here. You know poultry pol- guys. You know poultry guys. guys. Of course you do. I it's love about- trauma. <laughs> it's about chickens. Yeah. Is it a trauma film. And- okay, yeah. is it? Yeah. They're, they're both trauma films. No, no, no. Poultry guys is poultry trauma. guys is trauma. Yeah, and you. You know, I, um, you are wearing an Exorcist shirt. By yeah, the way. Ex- so the two scariest movies that I've ever seen in my life are The Exorcist and Poltergeist. They both terrified me as a child, mm-hmm. uh, and still they hold up. They're very, very scary. I think my favorite um, scary movies, if you will, like I love the original Halloween, and I love that series. Michael Myers is the ultimate, like you know, scary monster to me. And um, you know, it sounds. Like I'm trying to be a hipster, but like the original Night of the Living Dead, you know, like the no, the, that's like, not I, like, like I love that, and then I even like the remake that they did in the early '90s yeah. as well. Like I just I love those zombie movies. I'm kind of over them now because it's everybody's doing everybody's zombie doing stuff zombies. over and over. But yeah, I mean, I just love scary movies. Uh, I, I watched the new Hellraiser recently. Yeah. It, it held up too. Yeah, it held, you guys like that? Yeah. yeah. I, thought, I wish they did would have done it in the theater though. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. do a, I'm gonna do a quick shout out to to uh, or shout out question I said to Hope and George, uh, Halloween ends, comes out. Is uh, it really gonna yeah. end, or have you got any scoop as to whether it's gonna continue? We, we don't have any scoop. No scoop. Probably depends on how much money it makes, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing this this iteration will end. This, this, this they called it a uh, a thrillogy. Yeah. Thrillogy. Hmm. Three uh, Halloween, tri- tri- so three, three Halloween yeah. ends. Yeah, no. So yeah, this is the third one, though. This is the third one. Okay, yeah. this will be the third one. You guys okay. see? Uh, uh, I, I just watched an uh, interview with a vampire on AMC. That's a that's a TV show. Hope and George don't watch TV shows. We've discussed this in previous podcasts. I have not watched it. Do you like it? It's cool. Yeah, I didn't. 
<laughs> so that's a ringing endorsement. <laughs> Put that it's on the cool. poster. It's cool. <laughs> Hansberry. <laughs> yeah, and, it, uh, and as far as movies that scared me as a kid. Yeah. I mean, The Exorcist. Obviously, I was in I was in high school when that came out. But movies that scared me as a kid were all the all the Hammer films. Still scared me. All the all the all the Dracula, yeah. uh, the the Peter Christopher Cushing, Lee. Chris, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing. Those the the Blood of Dracula, House of Dracula. Those scared me for some reason. That's why I asked Bucky if he was a freaking vampire because <laughs> the vampires. I, I I I think that there's out there. I, I know some people that think they're vampires. And that's good enough for me. If you think you're a vampire and you think you might want to suck my blood, <laughs> cool. Get the fuck away from me. I, uh, I knew a kid years ago, like high school, that was convinced he was a vampire, and I tried to get him to suck my blood, but uh, he told me to have the right kind of blood. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah and, like He'd wait till no one was looking and put his fake fangs in. And I was like, come on. Can do Be it. Positive. Come on. Do it. <laughs> I never heard a vampire ask, what blood type are you first before I do it? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, interesting. Uh, so let me ask you this. Moving forward, I know, Jesse, you got the book that you're working on, and yes. you're you're going to continue to keep uh, doing your masterful cocktailing wherever you may do it, right? Yeah. I, wherever I, the case I really might enjoy be. it. Yeah, really enjoy I mean, it. That, is, that is how you uh, made your bread and butter, but now you're moving on to the things. But you still – I saw you back there. I saw you still it's like you go back to your roots no matter what no matter what you do moving forward the sump where you started is always a good sweet place to come back to and and, and do something special with that was an award-winning cocktail that you made tonight <laughs> that nobody got to taste until this evening you people were the first to actually wow. physically taste it other than the competition right yeah except for the yeah 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 I saved it for tonight yeah yeah thank you, you know, I appreciate every day that. you get to do like fun like Halloween style cocktails but yeah you're absolutely right I you know I kind of Got my start really doing stuff here in Columbus with bartending and all that kind of stuff, and um, really transitioned a lot of that into you know the music interest that I have in my life. But I don't get a chance to bartend too much anymore, and I love being behind the bar. I love just like making drinks for people, and you know it's one of the, like the coolest things that I think that I can do is I you know put together some liquids and somebody has an enjoyable experience. You know what I mean? And so when somebody says they like one of my drinks, that means a lot. You know, it's a and, gift. And it's easy. It's easy to cocktail with this guy's stuff right here. You know, yeah. he's, he makes some good. He makes some good liquid. Which brings me to sure. my final question: as uh, as four fifty one spirits has been the most excellent host this evening, allowing us the space tonight. What's the future hold for you, my friend? I've been trying to retire since I was like sixteen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Any of you want to contribute to that cause? Let me know. <laughs> you sold some bottles tonight. Yeah, I yeah. sold some bottles. You sold a few bottles this keep, evening. Keep plugging along. Uh, <laughs> got a couple of new spirits in the works. Uh, yeah, anything? New gin, you, anything? You, oh, okay. Uh, an aqua Is, beat. Hey, let me ask you this, because uh, gin seemed to be one of those spirits that was like trying to squeeze itself in, and, and, and amidst the bourbon craze, I kept seeing that gin was trying to raise its pretty little head. And get back in there and become the next popular, you know, uh, oh, gin crazy mm -hmm. spirit. He's got a gin I, over there. What's it called? I know he does. Yeah, I have one gin already. You can always have more gin. Yeah. Um, hey, gin. Uh, how do you feel, feel like about gin, gin? You can do a lot like more her. with gin as a bartender. Yeah. It's, right? it's, it's pretty diverse. You know, I mean. Um, Bourbon, you don't want to. Or whiskey in general, you don't want to do too much to cover up the flavor of it. Exactly, you know, gin like there's well so ma so many botanicals and, and and gin to begin with, and there's so many flavors and, and notes. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice to have, you know, both in your arsenal. I think I'd say gin is a is a classier crowd, but uh, I drink gin, so <laughs> <laughs> so no, <laughs> that that brings the bar right back down again. <laughs> yeah, but so so a couple. You, can you tease what some of the things you might be uh, yeah, working so the on? The gin is uh, kind of tiki, more tropical inspired, and then the other spirit is a uh, aquavit, which is a Scandinavian, um, cumin, caraway, dill, wow. strange herbal. It's gin esque. It's gin. What, what do you come up with these thoughts and ideas? Lots uh, and lots of research. <laughs> is that what you call it? That's what I call it. <laughs> That's how I get away with it. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank again Jesse Hubbard for making cocktails for all you this evening, and of course Chad Kessler from Four Fifty One Spirits for hosting this magnificent space. 
A lot of the artwork you see hanging on the walls while you were here before you leave is for sale as well. I mean, you know, I told him that I'm either going to commission a piece for him to do or, or, or buy something here that strikes my fancy. I, I never the saw misery. I never saw the Stephen King misery. I didn't see it last time I was here. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's good placement. Do you know, can I say something real quick before yeah, we man, wrap up? Yeah, say whatever you want. Um, yeah, we're out of time. Well, <laughs> I'm going to leave you out of it then. So, um I, I, everybody, I, give it up for Dino and John and, just and John. not Hansberry. <laughs> <laughs> this has been awesome. Uh, I've had a I blast, know. and it's not easy to do what they're doing. So, yeah. like, this is really cool. Um, so, thanks for having me a part no, of it. No, man, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> these guys, these guys. On behalf of Greg Hansberry, the son I never wanted, I, our audio engineer, and John Whitney, of course, who sits <laughs> behind the scenes and every once in a while brings that beautiful baritone up with a question. He does all the video YouTube stuff. Thank you, John Whitney, and thank you guys for coming out. You gave us yes. a nice little sold-out show. Granted, not a huge amount of seats available here at the distillery, but you filled them all, and you stayed, yes. and you enjoyed yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Ow. So thank you to 451. Thank you to Jesse. Thank you to Gatto's Pizza one more time. Yes. Gatto's. If you got to get a pizza, you got to get a Gatto's. You got it? Yeah. I wrote that for him. I don't think they're going to use it. <laughs> and as I always close almost each and every podcast, my name is Dino Tripotis. Thank you so much. Until the next bottle, see ya. Woo! <laughs>